Hey guys, Simon Bryson here, and right now, it's kind of like Black Friday, but for houses, okay? The real estate market is red hot, like they say out there. Everyone wants to go out there and buy their first property, maybe their second or third property, okay? The real estate market is really hot right now. However, though, that's not all. We also have a bunch of incentives to go out there and buy a home, a bunch of grants, a bunch of different things here and there. But for this video right here, I'm going to tell you exactly, hey, Tommy, should this be the reason that I go out there and buy a home? Should the interest rates be that reason? Should the grant I get from this bank or from this state be the reason I go out there and buy a home? In this video, I'm going to break it down, but the answer is going to be no, not really. But should you buy a home? The answer is maybe. I'm not saying not to buy a home right now in this hot market because again, personal finance is personal and my job here is to tell you exactly all the information you need that way you can make a better decision. So by the end of this video, basically, you'll know about the grants out there, you know how to buy a property the right way, how to use the 33% rule, and lastly, I'll tell you a story about my professor that bought a home the wrong way and I want you to make sure you avoid making those mistakes and if I I see a single comment saying, Tommy, no, no, but you know, buying a home is the American dream. So it always makes sense. The answer is that's not true. Okay. And I'm going to dislike your comment. All right. Can I dislike comments? I don't know if I can dislike comments, but I can't see one more of those comments anymore. Okay, guys. Now, if you guys are new here, I post videos every single day. So make sure to also subscribe and hit the bell to so get notified on the top. I also destroy the like button and leave a comment down below. By what age do you want to own your very first property? Or by what age do you buy your very first property? Now, the very first thing is this, guys, okay? Right now, obviously, the market is red hot. And it's because basically, we have more demand than we have inventory. Meaning, for example, supply and demand. A lot of demand, but not enough supply. Which basically means you put a property on the market, within days, it's sold. It is gone with multiple offers. And on top of that, people are offering beyond the actual action price. Basically, they're paying more for a property than it's actually worth. But on top of that also, we also have a bunch of incentives to go out there and basically buy a property. You get money to buy a property, which means that even if you use more and more and more, demand okay which creates a problem when it comes to bidding wars for properties and so on and so on however right now there are three main grants that i want to talk about well incentives okay you have for example bank of america and by the way most likely a lot of banks out there are going to offer this eventually to keep up with bank of america the idea is that right now you can get up to seventeen thousand five hundred dollars if you're going to be a first-time home buyer and 10,000 of that is going to be potentially for the down payment for the home. Meaning, I could go out there and buy a home with little to none of my own money as far as for the down payment. That's how crazy this is. On top of that, also, you also have the Illinois Smart Home Buy Program. Now, this one right here is crazy because this one here, when you buy your first property, guess what they do? They pay up to $40,000 of your student loan debt. So if you have debt, right, once you buy a property, they pay up to $40,000, okay, $40,000 of your student loan debt. So it might mean, hey, I get to buy a home and be debt-free as far as my student loan debt might be a good thing. And lastly, you also have the whole Biden proposal. Hey, whenever you buy your first home, you get up to $15,000, up to $25,000, potentially not confirmed yet when it comes to buying a home as far as it tax credit okay what i'm saying is guys there are a lot of reasons to go out there and buy a home and on top of that interest rates are historically low meaning it looks like all the stars are aligning for you to go out there and buy a home however though all these things are just basically a bonus it's just a cherry on top of your little ice cream it should not be the reason why you go out there and buy a home because basically if you can't afford a home the answer is you don't buy a home because basically you get a little benefit here and there if you're not ready you're not ready and by the way the big thing is basically like it's like black friday black friday the big incentive is basically, hey, you get a massive discount on this flat screen TV. So right now is the best time to go ahead and buy. Or for example, during February and March, they get discounts because basically everyone is getting their little tax return also. So everyone wants to go out there and also buy a flat screen TV. But if you can't afford it, 
It might be, for example, a one-year mistake where you actually pay it back. But with a house, when you can't afford a house, you do it the incorrect way, it's going to be, for example, a 15 to 30-year mistake because you're going to hold that property or pay it off for the next 15 to 30 years. And if you sell it, it may, for example, a 5% mistake or a 10% mistake. It's not like $100. It's more like $5,000 to $10,000 to $20,000 is actually going to cost you. So the point is, you should not use the grants as the overall reason to buy a property. What this should be is a little bonus when you're actually ready to go ahead and buy a property. Now, Tommy, how do I know if I'm ready to go out there and buy a property? By the way, I think everyone gets very excited about properties. So am I, by the way. I, I love real estate and stuff. But the answer is, if I'm not ready, I'm not going to go ahead and buy something when I'm not ready. It's, called, it's about patience, you know. And I'll tell you, for example, how you know you're not ready. And most people are doing this method right here. I call it the Professor Brown method because Professor Brown was my professor back in college. Obviously, an alias. I don't want to get sued by Professor Brown, okay. And this guy right here, he bought a property for the very first time. And he put down between 3.5% to 5%, but he was broke. He had no money. So in order to get that property right there, he had to empty out all of his accounts to the point where he had to break into his little piggy bank, get all the quarters from the sofa, everything. By the way, I'm not making this up. He told me this, okay? He told me exactly what he did, okay? And the idea was that to buy this property, he had to empty out all of his accounts. And by the way, he got the property. I mentioned, for example, well, Tommy, that right there is the American dream. He got the property. He sacrificed. Great, 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 great. But in reality, guess what? What happens, for example, if the roof starts leaking? He can't afford that. What happens if the AC or the heating breaks down? He can't afford that either. What happens if anything goes wrong with this property? Any unexpected expense? The answer is he can't afford that either. And the big reasons by was, hey, Tommy, well, the rent is almost as much as the whole mortgage. But guess what? When you're a landlord, the mortgage is not your only expense, okay? You have the mortgage, you have insurance, you have taxes, you have maintenance, you have HOA fees, you have potentially even PMI, private mortgage insurance. There are a lot of costs. And also, all of those unexpected costs, okay? You never know what's going to happen. So you want to be ready. You don't want to buy something when you can't afford it. How do you know you can't afford it? Well, because basically, you don't have enough for a down payment. You need one of those bonuses, one of those incentives to actually be able to afford it, like one of those grants. But if it's just a bonus, you're fine. But if you need it to be able to afford it, most likely you can't afford a property. It's just common sense. However, though, Here's what you can do to prepare to actually go out there and buy a property. And by the way, guys, the reason I'm saying this this way is because basically I want to make sure when you buy a property for the first time, it's not going to be a burden. I seen, for example, my grandfather struggle for the last like 15 to 20 years with a property that he basically could not afford when he bought it. And it's going to be very rough for you. And that's not what I want for you. Okay. Now, how do you know you're ready? Well, the first thing is you're debt free. And if you have debt right now, the idea is you want to use the avalanche method to pay off your debt, meaning you pay the debt with the highest APR, meaning you pay the debt that's costing you the most money. That means basically when you buy a home, you don't have to worry about your credit cards, any personal loan debt, any student loan debt. That way, your main focus is just on the mortgage and trying to pay it off faster. On top of that, also, you have an emergency account. I think the pandemic showed us basically, hey, you never know what's going to happen. So you always want to be prepared for the worst, which basically means, hey, if you have three to six months worth of emergencies, if I lose my job, right? What happens is, hey, I have three months to six months to figure things out. On top of that, also, you want to have between 10 to 20% for a down payment, meaning an incentive is a bonus, but it doesn't mean, hey, you can't afford a down payment. If you put down 20%, you get to avoid PMI. PMI is private mortgage insurance, and it does not help you. It helps the lender because if they lose money, if you foreclose, it basically covers their cost. It does not help you in any way, and that's what usually you want to put down 20% to avoid it. However, if it's too expensive, I understand. That's why I recommend a minimum of 10%, okay, but no lower than that, okay, because that way you can buy a property the correct way. The payments are not going to be that high whatsoever, but if you buy a property this way, not the Mr. Brown method. It means, hey, I have an emergency fund. I have 
basically no debt. And on top of that, I put down a decent amount of down payment, an extra bonus here. If you save two to 5% of the property value for maintenance, for unexpected costs, that way, if something does break, you're gonna be just fine and you don't have to worry about it either. That's also a massive thing. And that's why I say overall, okay, if you check all of these boxes, you have no debt, you have a down payment, you have an emergency fund, right? Well, when you get a grant, or a tax credit or an incentive, whatever it is, guess what? That's just a bonus and that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna save you money, yes, but it's not saying, hey, I can only afford this with this because if things go wrong, you're still going to be in trouble. On top of that also, guys, that is not the only thing, okay? Because the amount of house you buy is also going to be very important. So the price of the house that you actually buy is going to be pivotal here. You know why? Because basically right now, people don't mind paying an extra 5% above the accent price, all this stuff, because basically there's a lot of demand. But the answer is if you buy a home you can't afford for the next 15 to 30 years, you're going to be stuck almost living paycheck to paycheck, like a lot of the middle class. And that's, again, not what I want for you. So when it comes to buying a property, what are the rules here? Well, the property you buy cannot exceed 33% of your monthly income. And that's called the 33% rule, which basically means, okay, with all of the expenses throughout this house, okay, when it comes to, hey, taxes, the mortgage, the insurance, um, the maintenance, the HOA fee, PMI, potentially, all of these things, okay, if they cannot exceed 33% of your monthly income, if you can buy that house like that on a 15-year mortgage, it means, hey, I can afford this house. So basically, if I make, let's say, for example, $1,000, what's 33% of $1,000? That's $333, okay? So it means, hey, what I can afford is a $333 monthly home payment as a whole, okay? That's the idea. But that way, on a 15-year mortgage, by the way, by the way, why a 15-year mortgage is basically this way, you're focused on paying off this house fast and not focused on, hey, I'm going to have this property for the next 30 years and try to pay it off. How is that going to be possible? Okay. And usually when you get a 30 year mortgage, you're able to buy a more expensive house, even though you can't afford it. But in a 15 year mortgage, it forces you to buy a home that's not that expensive. So that way you can use some of your extra income to pay off this property even faster. And that's the formula I'm going to follow when it comes to buying my first property. And right now, by the way, personal story here, a year and a half ago, I wanted to buy a property so bad in New York to the point where I was going to get in around $700,000 in debt to buy this multifamily home property. But if anything weren't wrong, again, I was going to be just like Mr. Brown, okay? Just like him. But today, I have between 70,000 to 80K saved up for the down payment for my first property. That way, when it does happen, I can go ahead and buy. Why haven't I bought one just yet? The answer is basically, I'm moving to Puerto Rico, which means I'm gonna rent there for one year to see if I like it, right? And then I'll go ahead and buy a property. But by that point, basically, I might put down like 20, 30, 50, 60, even 70% towards the down payment of the property. That way, I can pay it off fast. And picture your life where basically, you don't have a crazy home payment anymore. That's going to be amazing. A great way to work towards financial freedom. And by the way, remember, you want to use a rent versus buy calculator. When you are the landlord, your only expense is not the mortgage. You have a lot of hidden costs, a lot of phantom costs, okay? So take those into account, okay? I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. As always, comment down below any questions and comment down below exactly, are you ready to buy a house? Like, honestly, you watch this whole video, so congratulations, but are you really ready to buy a house? Comment down below, let me know. I want to know if you're actually objective. And if you are, comment down below why. Or just write it down, for example, on a piece of paper. That way you know exactly, hey, Tommy, I'm ready. Here's why I know I am ready to buy this home. You're going to have solid reasoning. It cannot be, well, because of this grant here or because of this thing over here. No, it has to be written. Okay, you got to have a real reason why you're actually ready. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. And if you guys want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and call me, well, join me on my third channel called the Axe Tommy Bryson channel. Link down below where you get to call me for 30 minutes. 
for free. Link down below, go and schedule the call down there, okay? On top of that, I have a second channel called The Tommy Bryson Show, where I post there also every single day. On top of that, if you wanna DM me, well, DM me on Instagram, Ty Bryson. And before I go, thanks for watching another video here. Click my face right here. See you guys tomorrow, and as always, peace.